here we go. Got a bit of downtime. I'm going to turn, or at least try and turn, an old UPS into a reasonable size UPS for my surveillance cameras. That's the power source there. So I'm going to try and run through the UPS. And I've got a couple of 330 amp hour batteries. Let's see if I can turn it into a reasonable sort of UPS. Let's see how this goes. Okay, so we've got it open. Um, there's only six screws holding it shut, nice and easy. Front come off. So the battery's there. And the battery's still in pretty good condition. It actually still got good charge. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. 13.4. So turn it on. Beeps. The voltage drops straight down. So it all still works. Um, I just stopped using it because it was too small. That battery is completely inadequate. I know these aren't full time use, but I won't be using it full time. I just want. Look, if I get a couple of hours out of the, out of it before it blows up in, in a situation where I need cameras, good. Um, you know, cable. It's just um, six millimeter square. I've already got the the battery cable ends on that for some other project that I was doing. Just went down the road, got some Kavik um, con terminal connectors. So basically I'm just going to pull that off there, terminal connect that up and join it up like that. It's not going to be carrying a huge load. Um, that draws I think, um, what was it I measured it this morning, about 35 watts AC. So it's not going to be pulling a great deal through those cables, and it's hardly ever going to be doing it. Um, hopefully this has got enough to keep those 330 amp hours floating off. Um, if not, I have a 100 watt panel and a, that old PWM charge controller I'll throw on it, and just keep the battery topped off. Okay, quick and easy. I know it's pretty redundant. Look, red to red, black to black. Um, and a rough bit of electrical tape around that. Just so it hold, both holds them on and keeps them separated. They're not connected at that end, so there's no worries there. Before I do that, I'll just drill a hole somewhere in there so I can pass those cables through so it sits in the front there like that. So maybe I can go through the back. Yeah, I might go through the back just there. That looks like a there's plenty of real estate there. I don't, don't risk hitting any of these wires though. So I'll go through the back. Okay. I'm going through plastic with a drunt, drunt, blunt, <laughs> blunt drill bit. A bit messy, but it is working slowly. So I'm actually technically burning a hole through it rather than drilling it. But that's all right. I'll continue on. Okay, so with all those with OCD, you'll notice they're not level. We're in focus, but anyway, yeah, they're not level. But it's all good. So one will go through each one. Okay, so both of those cables went through the back nice and clean. Um, I've put one sort of around that side, and I've put one around this side. Lay it all up, once those cables are over, it'll be nice and neat and tidy. That'll go back up in the front. We've got a big hole there where the battery goes. So, I'm gonna try and fit just a, it's just a used fan. Usually they've got arrows on them. This one doesn't, great. Oh. Got a battery there, I can just test it, cut that off. Yeah, so cut that cable off. Hey, look at my hand in it. This is this is videography at its best. Let's get a good angle. Cut the plug. Get a good shot. Right. Ho, 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 ho. Look at that for action. And I didn't cut it all the way through. That sucked. Okay, I'm gonna have to pause it. Okay, so cut the cables off. I cut the white one off because the white one's not needed. That's a, um, a thermal. It does um, temperature. Look at this. Oh yeah, touched on that. And it spins. So that fan works. So somehow or other, I'll hack at the case. Fit that in there. I'll mount one of those thermal switches in line. It's a 30 degree. I'll put that in there somewhere. 
I'm actually going to have to a look at that for for planning. I have to undo that and probably patch those two wires directly into the the positive and negative from the battery. So it runs that. I'll put a fuse in line. They're not hard to wire in. So put a little five amp fuse in there or something. One amp fuse doesn't really matter as long as it's something. Wire that in. So when it gets hot, that'll kick in and hopefully make it last a bit longer. Yeah, so a bit of a dry test run. The jerry rigged up. 2.45. So can't be drawing too much from that battery. 2.46. That's not too bad volts wise. It's switched on. And look at the power cable coming out. And into my cameras. So, two point. Yeah. Battery's holding up well. Running those, um, running those cameras okay. The cameras up there. Cameras up there. See if I can get this both in the shot. No, I can't get both in the shot. You have to trust me. Turn that off, and the cameras go off. So, the battery voltage come back up to 2.77, 12.77. So that's, that's a good enough test for me. So I'll bring the big batteries over. Um, and we'll hook the big batteries up and we'll give it a dry run before I actually bother with those fans. And make sure that it actually needs it. This plug the 240 volt in. So, now those are nice and separate, I've got the drill there holding them apart so they're not going to touch. Turn it on. So it, so it turns on. Now I'm going to suggest that's because it doesn't have a battery on it. You look more professional. Now we've just got that held on there, that's all it needs. Turn it on. Cool. So that beep usually means it's charging. Let's see. More professionalism. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so the battery voltage is coming up. So it's charging as well. Great. So all I've got to do now. I've got a couple of me 330s underneath there. Uh, matched power and I even cleaned them for you. Shit, I'll turn the light on later, maybe too. Drop the cables down and see how this goes. Oh, that's kind of cool. Going from a, I don't know, two watt hour battery. It's all plugged in. There's not much to show it's running. And the battery's underneath to 330 amp hour. Uh, and battery terminals are there. Um, we'll see how they go over the next couple of days charging up. But it's not the end of the world type stuff, but I guess they call it UPS hacking or just repurposing a UPS and making it more practical. Well, time will tell. Um, hopefully, in the next couple of days, I get the the fan sorted. I got the switch and stuff in there. I've just got to buy and there's some sort of hole saw or something to cut the hole out, or maybe I'll just get the soldering iron and melt a hole in there probably be less professional and more like my YouTube channel doing that so yeah it's not exactly the finished product but yeah it was good fun playing okay so 14 hours later playing Lego landmines with my son oh Jesus I've got shoes on because I we use 31 watts running and 0.7 of an amp to run those cameras all night. That's pretty cool. Okay, it's the next day. It run all night without a problem. Uh, the battery started to charge well, so I'm gonna mount this fan in there like that. So I have to break those fins off somehow. No light, but no, no mount. I'm gonna break those fins off and then cut a hole in the side. Okay, so five minutes of attacking it with a pair of old rusty pliers. All that's come out. So 
then it's going to fit quite well in that hole. Now I'll go through and measure out with that. <laughs> no, I'm not measuring out, I'm just going to drill a hole. I'll wing it. So, work out where we've got to go with that and get it sitting in there nicely. Okay, so we've got a 32mm stepping drill. It's not going to be big enough for that. But I should be able to get a file or something and drill the rest of it out. But at least it's not done too redneck style. So, let's see how this turns out. Well, 15 seconds later, made short work of that. You may have to do some clean up, but that's fine. And yeah, just gotta make the hole into the right place and the right size. It's gonna fit in there well, I reckon. Messy, but progress. At halfway done. Just using a, a Dremel bit on the end of it cordless drill. Ah, that seems to be working. <laughs> okay, there it is. Still got to put some tape around those, but they're all soldered in. Got the, um, the thermal switch on top there, just hot glued on there. Nice and tidy. We can up the zip ties and button that up and I reckon we're going to call that done. I'm pretty happy with that. That hole took an enormous amount of time. <laughs> if I had the right tools, it would have been quick, but I didn't, so I hacked at it, and that's how it came up. So let's put this in together and get it all set back up and let's see if it works. Oh, there we go, all back together again. Look at that for accuracy. Meh, it works. So time to plug it all in and let's see what she does or doesn't do. After just a few minutes of being on, the fan kicked in. So she's getting a good, good, good airflow through that, so I'm happy with that result. And let's see, let's run it for a few weeks and see what she does. Actually, I might test that battery voltage. Well, that's not bad. 12.77 volts on the batteries. They haven't been charged for about a month, so that's not bad. They're on all last night, so they would have topped them off a little bit. And that's just me moving around the, the cables, unfortunately. But, yeah, let's see if they can get up around 13, 13.2 volts. I doubt it. We'll see what happens. If it can't get up that high, I'll add, I'll add something else to it to charge them up. But no, overall, pretty happy with that. Thanks for watching guys and putting up with my repetitive crap. I do quite enjoy making these little videos even though a lot of people have already made a heap of the same things. But yeah, this is just my experience. Have a good one.